welcome to our channel The Navy Guy. We hope everyone is doing well during this lockdown period. So today we are going to talk about lubrication system used on board a merchant vessel. Before getting started do hit that like and subscribe button. In this video we will study about Main Engine Lubrication System Cylinder Lubrication System Camshaft Lubrication System and Turbocharger Lubrication System. Before getting to the main topic let's understand what are the functions of lubrication. It reduces friction, prevents excessive wear of rubbing on surfaces, provides corrosion protection, removes some fictional heat, helps in cooling, and prevents accumulation of unwanted deposits. So starting off with the main engine lubrication system. Here is a simple pipeline diagram depicting the flow of lube oil in the main engine. The flow starts from the lube oil sump or lube oil drain tank. The tank has an inclined bottom. Lube oil comes from main engine lube oil settling tank present on first deck of engine room by a pump or by gravity. It is mounted with a gauge glass, manhole door, two level sensors and a temperature sensor. Lube oil must be replenished inside lube oil drain tank by opening the filling valve provided. The sludge is drained to oily bilge tank by opening the drain valve. Lube oil drain tank is located on engine room fourth deck. Then two main engine lube oil circulating pumps are present out of which one is running and one is kept on standby in case of any maintenance or failure of one pump to ensure that lubrication does not stop in any case it is a submersible axial centrifugal type pump. These pumps are electric motor driven. It generates a pressure of 4.3 bar. From there oil goes to auto backwash filters for duplex filters. Nowadays auto backwash filters are more commonly used. There are five filtering elements in case of lube oil auto backwash filter and is bigger than the fuel oil auto backwash filter. It works on the basis of pressure drop across the filter. It is located on engine room third deck. We will study more about auto backwash filter in our further videos. From there lube oil enters the main engine lube oil cooler. It is a shell and tube type heat exchanger. The cooling medium is low temperature water of central cooling system. It is located on engine room third deck. The normal outlet temperature is 45 degrees Celsius. It is provided with a bypass valve for isolating the cooler in case of any maintenance required, lube oil supply must not stop. We will study about heat exchangers in our further videos. From their pipeline is distributed into three distribution manifolds. Crankshaft cooling distribution manifold. Piston cooling distribution manifold. And turbocharger cooling distribution manifold. We will talk about turbocharger cooling in the last section of this video. Now we will look at a flow chart which will explain the flow inside the main engine easily. Talking about piston cooling distribution manifold the oil crosshead bearing via telescopic pipe or swinging arm or a dedicated booster pump with a pressure of about 2.5 bar. It lubricates the crosshead gutters and guide shoes while some oil is formed upwards via drilled passage in the piston rod right till under piston crown where it is sprayed underneath the piston crown using spray nozzles. Before going further there is a favorite question asked in most of the interviews that is. Why crosshead bearings are difficult to lubricate? It is because of three reasons. Firstly because of the oscillatory motion and continuous downward load with a high sliding velocity which makes it difficult in making of hydrodynamic lubricating oil film. Secondly there is no load reversal to encourage the entry of lube oil into the bearing and the speed of rubbing is also not sufficient. Thirdly separate high pressure pumping system is required to inject the lube oil into the crosshead bearings. After lubricating, the oil then returns by a separate return line through a split pipe and a funnel going right towards the main engine lube oil drain tank. This line is fitted with the flow meter and the temperature sensor and an alarm. As a safe watch keeping practice it must be monitored and recorded on a daily basis. If oil coming is above the normal working temperature it will give high temperature alarm and if not attended, it will slow down the main engine. The rest of oil from crosshead from the gutters and shoes travel into the connecting rod drilled passage and cools it in downward direction. 
Oil then enters the crank pin bearing top shell cooling it and via the drilled passages and joint center into the bottom shell. The oil is then discharged from bottom holes to the main engine lube oil drain tank via a perforated plate fitted with magnets every alternate crank through it to remove any worn off iron particles from the lube oil. The perforated plates must be inspected followed by a crankcase explosion. This completes the main engine piston, crosshead, top and bottom end bearing cooling. Now from crankshaft cooling distribution manifold the oil enters into the main bearing journal via drilled passages and from there lube oil travels through the webs and journals of the crankshaft and ends up into the lube oil drain tank via the same perforated plate fitted with magnets from the exit holes in the crankshaft. Following shown are some diagrams of how main engine lubrication system looks like in actual onboard ships. That's all for main engine lubrication that an engine cadet must know. So now we will talk about cylinder lubrication system. The system starts from cylinder oil storage tanks. Cylinder oil is used to nullify the acidic products of combustion and is requirement of Marpal Annex 6 of air pollution to reduce the overall sulfur dioxide emissions. They are two in number depending on alkalinity of cylinder oil. One is for total base number 40 another is for total base number 70. TBN 40 is used when engine is operating on low sulfur fuel oil and TBN 70 is used when engine is operating on high sulfur fuel oil or heavy fuel oil. These tanks are located on engine room first deck. The capacity of these tanks is 50,000 liters each. The outlet valves of these tanks are of quick closing type which can be closed in the event of an fire. Cylinder oil then travels to cylinder oil daily tank by gravity located on engine room second deck. It has a capacity of 500 liters and provides daily consumption for cylinder oil. It must be refilled every 12 hours as a safe watch keeping practice the level must be monitored while refilling as it does not have any auto stopping level switch or sensors and might start overflowing. The oil then travels to the cylinder lubricator box via line filter which can be of wire mesh type or a duplex type and a ball valve which is normally open and is closed in case the float valve present in lubricator box malfunctions. Nowadays alpha low dependent cylinder lubrication is incorporated. And earlier Hans Jensen type lubricator box was used. The lubricator box which is unit specific pumps the cylinder oil into the liner from the quills present on the liner surface. The zigzag pattern along the quills helps in circulating the cylinder oil evenly throughout the liner surface. Cylinder oil injected is either scraped off by the scraper rings present inside the stuffing box or is burnt while combustion. We will study the cylinder lubrication in detail in our further videos. Following shown are some diagrams of how cylinder lubrication system looks like in actual onboard ships. There is a favorite question asked on cylinder lubrication in Mayu class 4 oral exams. Explain why the correct timing of injection of cylinder oil is both critical and problematic? We will discuss the right answer of this question in our next videos. If you know the answer do you leave it in the comment section below. Now we will talk about camshaft lubrication system. Before getting further, a favorite question that is asked in interviews of many companies is that why there is a need of separate lubrication system for camshaft? The answer is. In case of fuel pump leakage the fuel oil will get mixed up with lube oil and will contaminate it decreasing the essential lube oil properties. So so if the leakage happens it will contaminate lube oil of capacity 35,000 liters which needs to be drained off. To prevent such a scenario camshaft lubrication system is separate from main engine lubrication system as it is of much lesser capacity of around 5,000 liters which is more economical for draining in case of leakage. The system starts from main engine camshaft lube oil drain tank located on 4th deck of engine room. It has capacity of between 1000 and 2000 liters. It is provided with the filling connection from main engine lube oil service tank located on the 1st deck of engine room. It is mounted with gauge glass, air vent, drain valve, manhole door, two level sensors and alarms and a temperature sensor. This sludge accumulated in the drain tank is drained off to oily bilge tank via the drain valve. From here the camshaft lube oil circulating pump takes suction via duplex filter and delivers to the camshaft lube oil cooler. Pumps are two in number so that in case of any maintenance required or in case of failure of one, it does not affect lubrication system. Pumps are of gear type. From there lube oil enters into your camshaft lube oil cooler located on third deck of engine room. It is of shell and tube type. The cooling medium is low temperature water of central cooling system. It is provided with a bypass valve so that in case of maintenance it can be isolated. 
From there the pipeline is distributed into two distribution manifolds. One is for cam case lubrication and other is for exhaust valve actuation. In cam case lubrication takes place in two ways. One is by splash which also lubricates the roller and followers. And other is by pump. One end of the camshaft is sealed. The other end of the camshaft connects to an engine at cam case. Here, oil is forced into the camshaft and is forced out of the holes around the cams. Because each cam lob has these oiling holes and drilled passages and by the assist of centrifugal force, lubrication is provided to all cams simultaneously. In case of exhaust valve actuation, this lube oil is provided to operate the hydraulic pump of exhaust valve used to open the exhaust valve hydraulically. Then both of these return lines connect together and via return magnetic filter oil is sent back to the camshaft lube oil drain tank. Following shown are some diagrams of how camshaft lubrication system looks like in actual onboard ships. That's all for camshaft lubrication system that an engine cadet must know. So now we'll talk about turbocharger lubrication system. It can be of two types depending on the type of bearing used in turbocharger. If ball and roller type bearings are used, a self-contained lubrication system consisting of a sump and a gear pump can be incorporated. If sleeve type bearings are used, they are lubricated by the lube oil circuit of the engine via a common feed pipe. The necessary lube oil pressure is to be adjusted by an installed orifice at the entry of the bearing casing. Normal lube oil working pressure is between 0.6 bar to 1.5 bar. Lube oil pressure can also be adjusted by oil pressure valves opening pressure. It lubricates the both the bearings and is then collected in the sump via a flowmeter and then to main engine lube oil drain tank. It is provided with slow down and shut down alarms with values corresponding to lube oil and charge air pressures. That's all about turbocharger lubrication what an engine cadet must have knowledge of. On board ship there are various essential lubrication systems also such as stern tube lubrication system, air compressor lubrication system, thrust bearing lubrication and many more. But what is covered in this video is to give an idea of the how lubrication is carried on board ships. That's all for this video. In case of any doubts, leave them in the comment section below. We hope that you liked this video. If yes, do hit that like and subscribe button. We will meet you in our next video super soon.